Hi, and somehow we've got to Thursday this week already. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, hope you're well wherever you are. This is TNT, our daily check on all the main Thai news stories. Now, whenever it comes to reporting uh, that particular topic, <clears throat> which starts with an E and ends with an anabis, C A N N A B I S. I often, as you know, get uh, demonetized when I discuss this topic, uh, just reporting on the topic, not even expressing any opinions. So anytime you see the green line, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But I still want to bring the topic to you. And I apologize for the juvenile subterfuge, but here we are. And we go to the Bangkok Post and uh, it says tighter broccoli rules drafted. Yes, I'll use the word broccoli. I think most of you are used to that now. And the government seeking to tighten controls over the country's nascent broccoli industry, revising a draft bill to prevent misuse of the plant after previously vowing to curb its recreational use. A new draft of the broccoli bill, which failed to clear parliamentary hurdles before the election in May, has been significantly rewritten to reflect concerns that misuse of broccoli could lead to addiction. And the public health minister said between economic and health benefits, we put health first. Dr Cholnan did not say whether the government would go as far as banning the recreational use of broccoli. The thousands of businesses that have sprung up since broccoli was decriminalised are anxiously waiting clarity about their futures. The revisions include tighter measures to plug loopholes that allow the use of broccoli for recreation, new protocols for cultivation and criminal penalties. And what about the timing? Well, the minister says the draft bill will be submitted for cabinet approval in December. Well, possibility that it could get passed before the end of the year, but there are a few political realities about this whole topic. I think the article gets into these soon. And the move to rewrite the bill follows the Prime Minister's pledge to restrict the use of broccoli for medical purposes. After thousands of weed shops, we're talking about gardening here, uh, opened across the country since the country became the first in Asia to decriminalise broccoli. And an ongoing regulatory vacuum following the delisting of broccoli as a narcotic in June last year has led to a proliferation of dispensaries estimated to total 6,000 all over the country. And the Per Thai Party promoted a hardline anti-drug campaign before the May 14 election, vowing to again classify broccoli as a narcotic. But, and here comes the political reality, it's now in a coalition with the 71-seat Pumjai Thai Party, led by Anatun Shah Vidakun, which had spearheaded the move to decriminalise the crop when it was part of the previous government. So the possibility if they decide to recriminalise or strike out the use of recreational use altogether, that they could get some opposition from those 71 votes from Pumjai Thai. But remember, in opposition, you've got that huge chunk of um, Move Forward Party MPs, and they also were campaigning to recriminalise the crop as well before the May 14 election. So I think the bill will go through, although it may hit a few hurdles along the way within the coalition. The Tuesday's TNT, big thumbs up to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description for a special deal for TNT viewers. And an invitation for you to subscribe to the channel because that really helps what we do here, covering all the main news stories from around Thailand. Now, this story has come from the Times of India, and uh, there's quite a lot to talk about here, but I dare you to actually find the story on the home page. There's a lot of advertising going on there, but I have zoomed in and gave it a bit of the yellow marker treatment so you can find the story. Google, Microsoft, Amazon to invest 8.5, that's US billion in Thailand. And Google, Microsoft and Amazon Web Services have announced plans to invest a total of over 8 billion US dollars in Thailand. Each company will invest 100 billion baht. And the three companies are expected to invest in establishing data centers in the country. According to Reuters, AWS, that's Amazon, plans to build a data center with a budget of 5 billion US dollars over 15 years. 
In a separate report says the Thai government and Google have announced a collaboration to enhance the country's cloud-based digital competitiveness and accelerate AI innovation. We're starting to get into uh, media release jargon now. The report says that a Google Cloud region will be established in Bangkok. That's expected to contribute 4.1 billion US dollars to the Thai economy and create 50,000 new jobs by 2030. This is all part of the current Prime Minister's visit to San Francisco in the APEC summit. When he's not pressing the flesh and uh, discussing things with politicians, he's been pimping out the Thai economy to some of the big tech companies to try and attract some investment. And according to CowsodEnglish.com, IT giants and Walmart are dealing with Thailand, according to the Prime Minister. And during his APEC summit visit to San Francisco, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance met with executives of large global American firms, particularly IT giants at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. He said there's no better moment to invest in Thailand and get tax benefits, clean energy and good living conditions. Or package it up any way you like, all these companies are looking for is profits. And he discussed working with Walmart, the world's largest retail chain, to introduce local Thai products, including halal food, into Walmart shops, while Walmart wants to open more markets in Thailand. And in addition, plans for increased investment and the relocation of production from the Philippines to Thailand were announced in discussions with Western Digital, Thailand's largest digital hardware manufacturer. And Satar mentioned that he's assigned a team to put together a three-month plan for attracting foreign investors, focusing on who's already invested, potential investors and their contributions. He emphasised the public should judge the results of the investments, while his responsibility is to carry out his duties diligently. So not only attracting investment from the big uh, tech companies and Walmart, but also talking a lot about this uh, new land bridge, which has come to the top of the pile again. And this reported by seatrade-maritime.com, Thailand revives the Kra Canal, but this time as a land bridge. And Thailand seeking investors for a 28 US billion land bridge across the Isthmus of Kra, which would allow shipping bypass the busy sea route of the Malacca Straits, reviving the centuries old Kra Canal project. And the 90 kilometre land bridge would connect the ports of Renong and Chumpon with major deep sea terminals built in both locations. So it's already been approved in principle by the Thai cabinet back in October. Uh, They've got the Thai Prime Minister now handing around the plate, trying to get a few pennies. And the land bridge would have the capacity to transport 20 million something or others of containers across the country, bypassing the Malacca Strait and major ports in Singapore and Malaysia. And further down there, it does not involve digging a canal, but rather an overland connection, details of which remain sparse. And then further down there, it does not involve digging a canal, but rather an overland connection, details of which remain sparse, although would likely involve motorways, railroads and pipelines. Well, one way or another, they've got to take the containers off on one side, transport them across 90 kilometres and then put them on a ship on the other side. And it says the Kra Canal was first envisaged nearly 400 years ago and its construction has been proposed on a number of occasions in recent decades. Most recently in 2015 when agreement was reportedly signed between Thailand and China, although both governments later denied this was the case. I've been following this story for over a decade. I'm not sure if that agreement ever existed, but let's barge on. The largest portion of the investment, some 18 billion US dollars, would be for the two uh, deep sea ports in Ranong and Chumpon, one on the Andaman Sea, the other in the Gulf of Thailand. And while the Thai Prime Minister estimated a six to nine day time saving by vessels bypassing the Malacca Straits, it's been previously estimated at just three to four days. I think there's a a certain amount of exaggeration going on here. And then down the bottom there, the Malacca Strait sees around 70 to 80,000 vessel transits annually. And there have been warnings of it reaching capacity by the end of this decade. A hypothetical closure of the Singapore and Malacca Straits is estimated at costing shipping $65 million a week as a result of diverting via the Sunda Strait. 
And then it finishes by saying, meanwhile, the proposed land bridge in southern Thailand cuts across a politically unstable region of the Southeast Asian nation. So uh, Ranong, Chumpon, Suratani, uh, Krabi, Panga, Phuket, uh, not politically unstable. Let's go to the map, the red line there showing where this land bridge would be going across between Ranong and Chumpon. Uh, and then further down there, the blue circle encircling uh, places like Naritawat and Songkla, right on the Malay border. And that's where the political st- instability is some four to five hundred kilometres south of the proposed land bridge. Over the past couple of years, uh, in my few trips back to Australia, I've noticed a lot of automation at uh, immigration locations for incoming and outgoing passengers. Seems a bit of that automation is now making its way to Thailand. Bangkok Post reporting automatic processing for outbound foreigners from next month. And most outbound foreign travellers will be able to pass through automatic channels to quickly board planes at Sawanapum Airport and relieve congestion. Now, up to now, automatic processing at Sawanapum is currently available only for passengers with Thai, Hong Kong or Singapore passports. The Immigration Bureau was improving its computer programming. Maybe they could make the 90-day reporting a little bit more efficient on computer as well. And amending regulations uh, so that other departing foreigners could also use automatic channels starting on December the 15th. They expect this will increase the processing of outbound travellers at Sawanapum from about 5,000 to 12,000. And the AOT plan to also install more automatic channels at Sawanapum and Domlang airports. So immigration officers could then be reassigned to speed up processing of inbound travellers. Well, three cheers for that one. But it seems at least one airport, the immigration officials aren't having to work too much at the moment. This story from BangkokPost.com. Krabi tourism struggles with flight shortages but it's saying holiday makers spend more money. And luxury tourists are travelling less but spending more money while Krabi tourism is struggling with a shortage of international flights, particularly from China. This is according to the owner of the Pimalai Resort and Spa, who says that although European guests, its major market, have been impacted by inflation and soaring living costs in their home countries, they still have a strong desire to travel to Thailand. And at present, European tourists take only one to two overseas trips per year, down from four trips prior to the pandemic, but they're spending more during each trip. Four trips a year. I've had about three over the past decade. And the current market of Colanta is dominated by guests from the UK, Germany, Switzerland, the US and China, which each account for roughly 20%. Domestic markets have dropped this year as local tourists with high purchasing power opt for outbound trips instead. There's all a bit of a a snapshot of travel in Krabi at the moment. And she said the growth of Krabi tourism in 2024 remains opaque, largely due to slow international flight resumption at Krabi Airport, especially from China, India and South Korea, which do not have direct services. And then further down at present, there are direct flights from Scandinavian countries, Poland, Singapore, Malaysia and the UAE. So always interesting to find out what's happening in different uh, tourism markets around the country. That's Krabi. And we now go to Patia and this story from the patianews.com. Bali High ship operators call for removal of shipwreck causing odour and traffic obstruction. Yeah, yeah, that looks like quite an obstruction. Let's see what's going on. And ship operators in Patia have expressed concern over a shipwreck that's been anchored off the coast of Ballyhai Pier for over three months. The ship, which is in a dilapidated condition, is sinking. It's emitting unpleasant odours and obstructing water traffic. And according to a captain of a nearby speedboat who preferred to keep his name confidential, the ship used to be a popular tourist vessel with a capacity of 150 people. However, it's not been used for over three months. Apparently, it's emitting a foul odour from the decaying shells attached to the ship's hull that have intensified during low tide and hot weather. 
And the captain and other ship operators are calling on officials to inspect the vessel and relocate it to another anchorage. Obviously getting in the way. Just imagine the new fragrance. New from Patia, the fragrance shipwreck. Well, hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. We'll speak more about their Sunday event again tomorrow. But in the meantime, have a great Thursday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.